Hey guys, it's Main here, back again with another video. Again, we're doing another review kind of live on stream. Uh, if you guys aren't in the know already, I'm starting to do the reviews kind of live on stream. I think it's a better format for me, uh, kind of keeps me on the toes, helps people uh, in the chat as well kind of learn something on the live. And as opposed to waiting for the video, you can watch it live and sort of get some some um, some immediate help with your account. Um, the notifications do get published over to the Discord. Both the link to my Twitch as well as Discord are in the description, so go ahead and click on the links there. Um, feel free to sort of jump in there, join the Discord, say hello, pop in. Everyone in the Eidolon chat is pretty active and they're pretty, they're pretty helpful with their accounts. So if they've gotten reviews, they kind of gen have a general idea of what they should be doing and they can help you out. Yeah, go and join the Discord. And if you're in chat, type exclamation mark Discord. It'll pull out the link for the Discord. You can go and join it if you aren't already. Anyways, <laughs> this is always going to be one high YouTube. Yeah, exactly. Anyways, uh, popping into it. Uh, today we have Tata Puyu. Uh, looks like this person is in World 6. Um, I think when he messaged me on Discord, it's more so like general help or general um, general direction. Nothing in particular he wanted to focus on, so let's go ahead and just jump in. See what he's currently working on, see what he could be doing to improve his account, and um, so let's give him some general pointers. So let's jump into it. So we have, um, we have two Elemental Sorcerers, two Blood Berserkers, one Siege Breaker, two DKs, a Bubo, a Beastmaster, and a V-Man. Perfect. So he's got a pretty standard setup. That's what I'm doing. Uh, so we have 339, 154, 330, 340. Looks like general account level is going to be like between 200 and 330. So that's something I'd probably simmer down on and try to focus on. Um, there's a few things I can say just looking at your characters that you should focus on. First of all, your character's overall levels are relatively low for someone that's in World 6. Um, if you're... Before I go too far, I want to check something real quick. Okay. So it looks like you are probably in a more rushed state in World 6. Uh, looks like you got here, uh, but you need to kind of go back to the previous worlds and kind of focus on some things before you progress World 6. World 6 should not be something you should be progressing right now. I feel like you could benefit from going back through the different worlds and trying to upgrade some of the things you may have neglected or missed out on. So don't worry about pushing World 6. I don't, suspo I don't suppose you're probably able to do that when you probably stop um, and focus on some of the earlier mechanics. So let's just talk about that. Okay, overall, um, I would recommend trying to push your gear up. Uh, overall, your character's like um, armor should be pushed up to like probably like Void Troll area. Uh, I don't know what your salts are looking at. We'll talk about that in a second, but you should try to push your gear up as much as possible. Luster is kind of a waste because it doesn't really upgrade into the more important stuff. Um, obviously, your end goal is going to be at, at kind of hopefully feasible for you is going to be like Troll to Magma gear. Uh, void is a good kind of starter point where you can try to push your gear into, try to upgrade that into troll uh, would be the ideal. Uh, troll, magma, marble glass, wherever you're able to upgrade that. It'll give you a bunch of all stat, which helps with your damage, which helps with your accuracy. Um, anything that you're uh, that you're lacking, it would help you a lot with. As well, a uh, big point you can try to upgrade your account is the tools. Um, getting your characters into void luster plus tools would be a really good thing you can try to do. Give you a ton of damage as well. So if you're struggling with damage, it would help you with that. Also, uh, Additionally, the stats do help with your earlier skills. So chopping, mining, catching, and fishing, they do scale off your uh, your class's main stat. Uh, rather, you know, their specific stat. So you can boost the efficiency of those skills by upgrading your tools, uh, but also those stats that apply would also give you more scaling efficiency for those skills. So try to upgrade your tools. I think void should be relatively decent for you. Pushing into luster might be a little bit difficult if you're lacking for green salts. We'll talk about salts in a second when we get there because I have no idea what your refinery looks like. I imagine it's probably bad. It usually is bad for most people. Uh, so let's talk about that in just a second. Uh, looks like you have some Onyx statues already, uh, so you're not doing too bad. I hope you have Choco Chip. I think you. I think I saw you had Choco Chip. You do? Okay. So, I mean, you could Crystal Farm on your DK. I mean, your Crystal Spawn's not doing terrible. Um, I imagine you have decent cards, too. You just don't have card doublers. So, I mean, you have... You can Crystal Farm. I'd probably recommend doing the Crystal Farm. You got some of the more important ones done, so good on that. Um, you probably just need more drop rate, I imagine. Unfortunately, I can't really check your drop rate, but yeah, drop rate's probably something you're struggling with right now. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you're active farming, just make sure you have high drop rate. Usually the goal I try to aim for or try to push people to do would be like around 10 to 13, 11 to 13 would be the goal you want to push, uh, would, would be what you want to do. Uh, but yeah. 
regarding prayers, um, you never really want to run Fiber of Absence. Fiber of Absence is a multiplicative damage reduction and absolutely take it off. Uh, running Fiber of Absence is a terrible, oh, it's a terrible prayer. Pretty much at all points of the game, you're going to be hitting multi-kill. And if you're hitting multi-kill, Fiber of Absence just reduces the amount of kills you're going to be getting. So take this off. It's really only good if you cannot hit multi-kill. It's the only way you can sort of increase the amount of kills you get. But like I said, it is a multiplicative damage reduction. Take it off. It's really bad. Other thing, you are running Royal Sampling. That's pretty good. I saw someone mention take off 3D Printer Pair. Do not do that. 3D Printer Pair is really good. So uh, if you don't have that on your characters, like this character, for example, put it on. Uh, you need to hit 90% print sample rate. That is extremely important. If you're not hitting this right here for 90%, um, you're doing something wrong. Go ahead and get, put it on all your characters. All right, on the dashboard, you have your keys done. Good, good, good. Stamps. Okay. Uh, looks like you have most of the stamps unlocked, just minus the World 6 ones and some of the ones from World 5. So these are sailing specific, so if you can unlock them, obviously unlock them. Uh, the stats you get from them are really good. Uh, so I try to focus on trying to unlock that if you were able to, if your sailing is pushed enough. Uh, overall, you should try to aim for a stamp level of 7,500 that's hopefully feasible for you. Big ones for you to focus on are going to be multi-tool stamp and ladle stamp. This will help you massively with cooking. These are base uh, efficiency for those skills. Leveling them up will give you a huge amount of cooking efficiency. Will help you juice out uh, getting ladles, uh, ladle production. Also, you don't have levels in this forge stamp. I tried to upgrade it. Um, if you're able to mine god shard ore, which is what this scales off of, uh, I try to upgrade this. This gives you more forge capacity, which um, is not something that's going to impact you too much right now, but it is important. Help you also get uh, those stamp levels if you're um, if you have the rift upgrade for it, which you do. Okay. Um, yeah, overall, I try to recommend upgrading the stat stamp specifically. Um, some of the better ones to upgrade are going to be Intellecto Stamp, the Sash Side Stamp, Maxo Slapo. Those are all really good stamps to try to upgrade. Those give you base stats, which gets scaled through all stat percent. It also gets scaled by the doubler from Lab. Uh, these stats, uh, these stamps are extremely good for pushing your damage as well as your accuracy on your other classes, um, and also helps with your. Uh, with your efficiency for your skills. So it gives you a ton of bonuses there. So highly recommend doing that. Anvil, okay. This is something you absolutely should try to do. On your elemental sorcerer, uh, you can try to push this up as much as possible. Uh, try to unlock all the materials from world one to world four to try to give your characters more points. Uh, this will help you with your production. So if you're struggling here and trying to level 13 some vials or using, uh, using those materials to upgrade some of the bubbles in alchemy, uh, getting these points will help uh, make that go by faster so you don't have to be kind of time locked for a long time. Uh, I'd highly recommend trying to spread your points between speed and capacity. If you're V-Man specifically, I'd recommend probably EXP speed um, and just keep focusing on uh, progressing thread for your V-Man so you get more EXP to level it up. Uh, but, you know, producing it in speed and capacity will be able to, will make it so you can start leveling up your vials uh, relatively quickly. If you're kind of capped on the production per hour on thread, nails, whatever you're trying to produce. Overall production is extremely important, even into endgame, because as you produce bricks, uh, that's going to be important for upgrading things like the crystal and stamp. So if you're struggling with crystal mob spawn chance, this is something you obviously want to sink your points into, but if you don't have the production speed for it, you can't do it. So uh, if you're struggling with that, uh, go back through World 1 to World 4, get the materials that you're missing to upgrade your anvil and all your characters to produce that production speed. Alchemy. Okay. So um, I would highly recommend trying to unlock the bubbles from World 5. You're almost there. Um, I didn't mean that sigh to be kind of toxic. Uh, you're doing relatively fine. Uh, like I said, I think some of the earlier things of your account are kind of neglected, but you can start uh, going back and try to unlock this. Try to unlock your bubbles on your Shaman because he does have a talent called Bubble Breakthrough, uh, your Bubo rather. Uh, it'll give you a higher... Uh, percent chance to unlock those bubbles so it's always best done on your shaman uh, since you're into world six you would benefit obviously from some of the upgrades uh, that are presented there uh, such as crop evo chance the tome upgrades uh, so try to unlock those as well try to unlock the world six bubbles as well that would be uh, my probably biggest advice here alchemy uh, world six bubbles do provide a lot for progressing those skills and giving me a ton of a uh, ton of other bonuses such as uh, strength and agility through the, uh, through the tome bonuses. So try to unlock those so you can get the bonuses from those. Uh, you're just missing out on a little bit of bonus from the tome specifically, which is unlocked through alchemy. Try to unlock those if you can. I can't see past uh, power try one and try three in IE, so I hope you have those unlocked, but try to push it if you can. Big thing for you to focus on, I imagine you're probably able to upgrade this right now with bargain tags. Try to uh, upgrade diamond chef some more. 
it's at the point where it's able to be upgraded by no bubble left behind with the lithium upgrade but still try to upgrade this this gives you a ton of meal cooking speed uh the 1.17 times is deceptive it gives you a lot more damage than that it actually it's right now it's giving you an 844 times multiplier but the more you upgrade that the more that multiplier goes up Obviously, the more meals you unlock, uh, the more meals you get to level 11 will give you even more meal cooking speed. So when we get into cooking, I'll come back to this. But this is a really important bubble to try to upgrade as much as you can. Uh, also, if you're struggling with EXP, never mind. We'll come back to this. Let's not talk about grind time. I don't think you're at a point where you want to do grind time. But this is how you kind of juice out class EXP. But again, I don't think you should be focusing on this right now because of some of the things to solve with your bubo. We'll get back to that in just a second. Uh, thanks Shadow for the follow, appreciate it. Anyways, alchemy in general, I think the best things for you to focus on are going to be these second bubbles. Trying to get these up to 100 million resource costs, so you can try to add them these. These bubbles are extremely good and some of the best bubbles in alchemy because they boost these small bubble um, sort of bonuses that they provide you. It'll help juice out your skilling, it'll help juice out your damage, so if you're missing damage or skilling, these bubbles will overall help your account progression. So try to get these up to 100, 100 million resource cost and try to push it up to about like a 70 to 80% capacity. You can use Eidolon Toolbox. It'll give you a good breakdown of what that uh, what that capacity is. You can just change the efficiency threshold here. It's like 70%, 80%, uh, whatever you feel comfortable doing that we can try to push that up. It'll give you a ton of bonuses. This um, shouldn't neglect that. It's absolutely important. Okay. <clears throat> um, so, I mean, I... You have most of the bubbles unlocked. I try to unlock some of the Equinox ones. I mean, they do give you some good bonuses. Uh, Shrine charge rate is going to be pretty good. Faster Equinox bar fill rate if you're struggling with Equinox. Um, these bonuses are pretty good, so try to unlock the vial for them. <clears throat> okay, the other thing I do want you to start focusing on is you should be at a point where you're able to start getting level 13 vials and some of the earlier skilling resources rather skilling resources in general should come a little more natural and easier to you so try to get some of these bubbles up or vials up to level 13 the copper ore one uh the jungle logs uh toilet logs uh the gold ore getting these up to 13 it can be really important when you unlock the level 13 vial or vial mastery in rift uh these bonuses are going to help your account a lot uh the, it'll boost the sort of magnitude of every single vial that you have there. So it'll help you with things like multi-kill. It'll give you a uh, stamp cost reduction. That's really important. It'll give you gaming EXP, sailing speed, cooking speed, uh, new pet breed chance if you're struggling with breeding. It'll help you a lot with that. Uh, so try to get those scaling bubbles, up, uh, scaling vials up to 13. Get a high print of them. Get get those up to level 13 if you can. And yeah, don't focus on sigils right now. Uh, try to focus on unlocking the bubbles if you can. Okay, refinery. So I suspect your refinery is kind of out of whack here. So typically I don't recommend the salt refinery chart. Like I try to stay around those levels. It's not entirely accurate. The best way for you to judge uh, your refinery like like production and like cost would be through Eidolon Toolbox. It does give you a cost per hour breakdown. Uh, so anything that's orange right here, you're in a, you're running at a deficit, so you need to kind of upgrade those. This is mine, for example. So I, per, I, I know I did this kind of out of whack. Don't worry. I know it's bad. Uh, but you want to kind of focus on re-maintaining your salts and getting this back into balance because the longer you're salt locked, the worse your account's going to be. I see you're already salt locked for orange salt specifically. You can't produce enough orange salts to sustain your uh, blue salts. I never put these on 0% auto refine unless you're actively trying to push them. You, there's no reason you should be auto refining at 0% to try to upgrade these. So stick it on 10%, 25, 50, whatever you want. Just don't upgrade orange, blue, um, or whatever. Try to stick to the salt refinery chart and maintain your salts uh, that we have them for crafting materials, upgrading your tools. Because uh, right now you're salt locked, which means you're not able to upgrade some of the towers in construction, means you're not able to upgrade your tools or get bags or whatever. Um, salt lock is a very rough thing to deal with, even into end game. So always try to stick to infinite salt generation. Um, you never want to kind of forget that. You always want to keep red salts and green salts on 0% auto refine. Those are going to be hard to sort of under level. You want to keep pushing those levels as high as possible. Okay, yeah. And if you're struggling with tower defense, maxing this out for green salts is going to be pretty good, getting extra points for warship tower defense. Uh, this will help you push the higher waves. Uh, it just gives you more points to be able to push that. So you can try to max that out in salt. Like, it's a pretty easy upgrade. 
Okay, yeah, I suspected the prints were going to be somewhat lacking. So yeah, like I said, alchemy is going to be your best friend here. Highly recommend trying to upgrade Mage's Best, Archer Robust, and Warrior's Rule, those second bubbles. These will help you with skilling. Uh, the, you should obviously focus on trying to push the uh, skilling bubbles as much as you can. So like Hocus Choppus, Ma um, Mage's Best, Hocus Choppus, Labrain Tools, Severe Purple, and uh, Tree Sleeper. Those are really good for chopping specifically. You want to try to upgrade those with atoms. Um, atoms are basically like free upgrades you can do. Um, I hope you do. You have Boron unlocked, and you have, I believe, the, you have Permeep unlocked. So you have 12 bubbles you can do every single day for free, basically. You just need to upgrade your atom generation so you can sustain doing those clicks every single day. Like I said, the best thing for you to do right now in Alchemy is try to get Mage's Best, Archer, or Bust, or Warrior's Rule up to 100 million resource costs so you can upgrade them with atoms. So for free, basically, every day. Uh, that's going to be your main goal right now. Uh, once you start focusing on that, my big recommendation is to swap over. Try to focus on skilling to get higher prints for your characters. Again, going back to your characters, they should all have Royal Sampler equipped, and you should really try to hit 90% print sample rate. That's going to be extremely important, uh, so you can try to hit that. Other thing you should really should be focusing on is also multi-log, or like the multi-resource chance. I do kind of forget this in my head that some people don't have this maxed out. You clearly don't either. Um, so in your skilling info as well, you can check what your uh, resource drop rate is. This caps at 300% and it's a multiplier to how many resources you mine or like chop or whatever. So it's extremely important you get this up to 300%. It's a hard cap. You get some from stamps, you get some from star signs, and you get some from the bubbles, from those big bubbles. So try to upgrade that as much as you can to cap yourself out at 300%. Double check this. If you're not at 300, focus on those bubbles. So the bubbles I'm talking about are gonna be Wyoming blood, uh, sploosh sploosh for multi-fish chance, bug squared, and multilogo. Multilogo obviously is relatively hard to upgrade, so I um, try to produce iron bars, and you can use bargain tags to reduce the cost of this to try to upgrade that, uh, but once you get this up to 300%, you don't have to worry about it at all, I guess 300% is kind of the hard cap right now for you. So, well, it's a hard cap for everyone, so try to upgrade that to 300%. It's a It'll multiply the amount of logs or resources you generate, which gives you higher prints, which gives you more atoms, which gives you more boron upgrades, which gives you more alchemy upgrades. Everything kind of skyrockets once you start focusing on skilling. Skilling is everything in this game. I know like the main focus is obviously pushing worlds, pushing damage, but the longer you neglect skilling, the worse your account's going to be because you neglected an atom collider, which means you can't produce enough atoms to push alchemy. Alchemy is kind of the square two of the game. Stamps, I argue, are going to be square one. Uh, so you really want to get those up to speed with your account uh, before you can really consider pushing World 6 is my recommendation. And yeah, like I said, you're struggling with um, construction, I imagine, because you don't have the salts to upgrade that. So like I said, fixing your refinery is going to help out with your uh, with your pushing for um, for tower defense. The big thing for tower defense is trying to get Poisonic Elders level 20, so you're hurting hard by not being able to upgrade this right now. So yeah. Hey, Giggles, what's up? Yeah, and like I said, big thing is going to be Atom Collider for you. Uh, Atom Collider right now is, is going to help your account a lot. Upgrading Boron, right now you only have 12 upgrades every single day. One, you have the achievement from Permeep, plus you have two base from Boron, so you're getting 12 upgrades per day. Uh, just when you go to upgrade Boron, just get enough atom generation to uh, get enough atoms to upgrade your bubbles in alchemy 12 times, then upgrade boron, then go back to alchemy. You'll get some free sort of upgrades from boron. You'll be able to push your bubbles even further. Uh, so you get additional free clicks every single day uh, than if you were to just upgrade boron like seven levels at a time or something. So uh, be cautious of that when you're trying to upgrade boron. It'll give you like a free reset kind of to be able to push atoms even more. Um, later on, your focus with Atom Collider is just trying to push the rest of the unlocks here. Uh, there's a lot of bonus things that it does provide you, some really good things. Uh, specifically, Fluoride is really good for meal cooking speed. It gives you, it, I believe it's a multiplier for meal cooking speed, so it's really good when your plate's at level 30 plus. Uh, it's one of the bigger upgrades you can for meal cooking speed. Uh, this, combined with Diamond Chef, combined with um, Blood Marrow from the V-Man Talon, is really good for cooking speed. Speaking of cooking, let's go talk, actually, before we talk about cooking, let's talk about worship. Okay, not terrible. Um, the only thing I see here that's a problem is your skulls aren't really, you aren't pushing your skull levels to be as high as they could. Um, 
I imagine you're probably salt locked, and that's why you can't push your skill levels higher. But yeah, try to upgrade your skulls so you can get more worship charge per day. Um, if you fall into the trap, never use slush skulls. Slush skulls are really bad, so don't equip them. Um, keep them though; they can be used in a different skull upgrade. But yeah, I think your issue right now is your salt locks. So you're not able to upgrade them. But general rule of thumb: never use. Uh, I highly recommend not using charge siphon. I feel like you were previously, uh, you are previously were a charge siphon enjoyer. So try to level up your uh, your worship level on all your characters. Um, I'd recommend at the totem in world three uh, to try to use all your charge on clash of cans. That gives you the most exp per charge. So give you three hundred forty eight per one charge used. This is your most uh, efficient exp use uh, for your totem for pushing worship level on all your characters. You want to push worship level on your character as much as possible on v-man v-man is extremely important because of his talent species epoch it gives you a huge bonus to critters and worship for combined worship and trapping level so getting worship and trapping up as much as you can on your v-man is really important for pushing your account and getting enough uh enough like souls and critters to progress your account through traps and stuff okay and your prayers um so your big focus is trying to get goblin gore fest up to wave 121 it's obviously going to be a little difficult because your tower levels are kind of suffering because you don't have salts, but Zerg Rush again is an extremely important prayer. If you're able to get to wave 20, 121, it's extremely good for AFK gain rate. It gives you higher prints. Uh, this in conjunction with Skilled Dimwit, I tried to max out, uh, max out Skilled Dimwit as, as fast as you can. Scaling efficiency is going to be really good. Obviously, it gives you higher prints, so put it on when you're scaling to get you higher prints. Um, other prayers to keep, uh, keep in mind of, try to max out as soon as you can it can be minus mind for more drop rate when you go like crystal farming under dk for example um another one jawbreaker is really good it's multiplicative more money uh, on your on your characters when you're trying to money farm um royal sampler if you're not at 90 percent print sample rate try to get this up to like level 10 or 11 that way you're able to get the 90 percent print sample rate it gives more exp but it costs more at the same time yes so going back to uh chart uh, going back to this if this is exp per charge so yeah, it costs more. So you're using what, like 120 charge uh, for like one use of this, but you're getting 120 times 348 EXP every time you click that button or deposit it to your, uh, to your thing. So you're getting a lot of EXP. You're, you're, the most efficient way to level up your worship is going to use all your charge you can on Clash of Kings. So yeah, that's, that's I recommend doing that. Moving on to cooking. Okay, cooking. So your meal cooking speed is relatively low. Um, kind of the reason for that is your diamond chef is relatively low. So again, if you're looking for meal cooking speed, I'd highly recommend trying to push meal cooking speed uh, through diamond chef. Uh, you should be able to use bargain tags to upgrade it like another one or two levels. And then kind of the rest of it's going to be upgraded through lithium, through no, no bubble left behind, kind of passively as you, as you go through the days of your account. So try to upgrade diamond chef. This will help you as well. Uh, if you haven't already, try to book Blood Marrow. It's only level 100. You can book this to get even higher meal cooking speed. This is multiplicative. So this is a huge upgrade to meal cooking speed. Huge upgrade to meal cooking speed. This plus Diamond Chef are the biggest snowballs for meal co uh, for cooking in, in general. Um, this plus Fluoride at level 30 plates obviously is going to help you a lot flesh out your meal cooking speed. So try to upgrade blow, uh, Bone Marrow with the talent through the talent library. Uh, try to push that up as much as you can. That'll help out with cooking. Uh, the big ones for you to focus on are obviously going to be anything meal cooking speed related. So egg, corn dog, cabbage, uh, soda, whatever. I think I'm missing a few. But yeah, try to upgrade your meals to level 11 if they aren't already. Uh, you have some meals I believe you're able to. You only need 14 ladles on this one, on the, uh, the banana. To be able to upgrade that to diamond, you'll get some more meal cooking speed there. Cool. Okay. Uh, the only thing I can't see in IE for public accounts is your companion. So if you have Dude, I imagine your lab is already lit up. So just make sure some of the nodes are already lit up. Like the most important ones are going to be green stacking. If you have green stack resources, uh, mainframe bonuses are pretty are going to be pretty good that we're able to connect to everything. If you're missing money, the fungi finger pocketer for Gmush kills is going to give you a ton of money. Um, I think you only have like 10 mil kills, so it's not that much, but it does give you some more money. This is a multiplicative bonus. Yeah. And alternatively as well, uh, something you want to consider is trying to finish out your lab grind, trying to get this up to level 75. I'd recommend getting an overall account level of 1,000. The reason I say that is because of the Rift uh, gives you a bunch of bonuses because I believe you have 
you should have skill mastery unlocked, so you do get bonuses for lab. Um, you're missing out on like 1% printer output and all skill XP. These are pretty good bonuses, so overall get your account up to 1,000. Uh, lab plus construction um, plus shit, what else? Sailing, gaming, like all those are pretty easy to get up to level 1,000. Gives you a ton of bonus of your account. So recommend trying to push that up to 1,000. You can just generally flesh out your account. So if you're struggling with levels in like mining, chopping, uh, getting lab up to 1,000 will make it a little bit easier because it gives you all skill EXP. Uh, also, a uh, little, little tip, if you have uh, Divinity Pearls, you can max out cooking to level 500, which should give you, I believe, all skill efficiency. So you, you can use balloons on your characters till you're like level 20 or so, 25, 30, depending on how many balloons you have. You can use Divinity Pearls to level up to 50. Uh, it'll help you uh, reach that all skill efficiency cap so you can get just general all skill efficiency for all of your characters, whatever. Also, for catching, try to get to level 300. The catching cards being passive are really good. Same thing for fishing. Just passive cards are going to help with your efficiency, so you have to worry less about like your card layout or whatever. So if you're struggling with efficiency and those skills, getting it to 300 is going to help a ton. And generally for Rift, I, I want to say you should have enough damage to be able to push Rift to get Eldritch Artifacts. If you're not, again, your big focus is obviously going to be Stamps and Alchemy. Uh, but getting Eldritch Artifacts is going to be extremely important because Eldritch Artifacts are a huge bonus for your account. And I do want to talk about something you could be doing right now. We'll get to that when we talk about sailing. Uh, but Eldritch Artifacts are going to help you a ton with your account. And Divinity, uh, just try to unlock the rest of your gods. Um, if you have Dute, this is really big. It's going to give you a bunch of skill, uh, skill XP. The passive blessings that Cattle Crook and Bagger give you, I think, are yeah total damage and sailing speed, so it'll help out a lot. So... Try to unlock these. Um, they'll give you some passive bonuses for your account. Yeah. Based off this, I don't think you have dupe. But, yeah. I mean, overall, you want to try to push Divinity level 40 so you can put everyone on Tranqui um, when you're not pushing Divinity level. So you can just kind of level them up in the background. Tranqui level 40 is where you unlock it. It's really important. <clears throat> okay. Now, sailing. Let's talk about sailing. This is really big. Sailing has a lot of bonuses. And, ooh, okay. Big, big thing you could be doing here is going to be unlocking Ancient Fosri Tusk. When you get to Eldritch Artifacts, like, stop what you're doing. Put every single boat you have right now on the first island to try to unlock um, Ancient Fosri Tusk. This will double the artifact find chances giving you. So you'll get... 56% more artifact find chance for just unlocking this. Um, once you get Eldritch, it'll give you an additional 56%. Obviously, it'll scale as you get more sailing levels, but it it is the most important early game upgrade you can get for sailing artifact find chance. Hard focus unlocking this. This is how you are able to more easily obtain uh, the upgrades for sailing. Uh, as well for sailing, uh, something people I've seen not really focus on is this is big here. So... You don't have golden hamters on your characters kind of spread out. You have it all on like what what two characters. So on your DK, try to farm golden food on uh, the crystal mobs to drop golden hamters and split them across all ten of your characters. This gives you a better chance of claiming sailing AFK time. Doing this, spreading across all your characters, is going to massively increase or decrease the amount of time you spend on sailing. This will push you literally months ahead of time. It will also save you months for. Um, for sailing uh spreading this across all of your characters will massively increase the uh decrease the amount of time you spend on sailing um so yeah if you're struggling with sailing that's the like number one goal is to try to do that also additional tip for anyone that's in lab kind of actively doing nothing uh what you can do is go farm uh nightmare ephon to drop the uh the royal turban that royal turban actually gives you 15 percent gold food effect which increases the chance of claiming sailing afk time on your characters so if you're struggling with gold food effect that would help you get 15 percent more it would help you unlock or rather get more percent chance to unlock sailing time when you go back and collect time on that character so a little bit of a tidbit there yeah try to un uh, get more golden hamsters, spread them across your characters it'll help you progress sailing by literal months <laughs> so absolutely do that Ooh, also where is it this box right here is also pretty good um the way this works, when you max it out at 800, it's like 5.33% of your AFK counts for sailing. It's not a 5.33% chance 
to get sailing AFK time and you collect your character, it straight up counts your time as sailing. So say you're gone for eight hours, it takes 5.33% of that and progresses it towards sailing. So um, eight times 60, so 480 minutes times 0 0.0533. So it adds 25 minutes to sailing. So it progresses sailing by 25 minutes if you're gone for eight hours on each character. So if you max out this box to 800, it's going to help you progress sailing as well. Uh, other thing in alchemy, you have the sailor at heart bubble unlocked. This is extremely important. If you equip this on all your characters, this additionally gives you more time, all right, more chance to claim sailing time. So you can progress sailing there even more. All three of those are really great ways you can push sailing. And I, I suspect once you do that, you'll skyrocket in progress for sailing, especially with summoning specifically. You have artifact find chance here, uh, plus the lab nodes also giving you 1.5 times artifact find chance if you're able to light that up. That'll help you massively push sailing that we don't have to worst, uh, waste so much time trying to unlock the rest of your relics. So focus on unlocking Fosery Tusk. Um, then the next big one for you after that's going to be AD Tablet. After AD Tablet, skip everything else. Go to Fury Relic if you can. Uh, just be mindful of the time it takes for you to sail to the island. If it's taking you longer than two hours, if it's taking longer than, like, honestly, four hours for Fury Relic, probably go back, upgrade your boats, upgrade the speed so you spend less time uh, worrying... Uh, Less time wasting about trying to wait for Fury Relic to get unlocked. Um, try to focus on Artifact Find Chance or Sailing Speed right now. Sailing Speed seems to be kind of your pitfall right now. So try to focus on that. You'll be able to push the, uh, the Relics relatively fast. Artifacts, Relics, whatever. <clears throat> but yeah. Your big push is going to be Rift in combination with unlocking Hamters, unlocking the PO Box, as well as unlocking or upgrading Sailor at Heart if you can. All like four of those are going to help you massively with Sailing. And I don't want to talk too much about the World 6 skills because I don't feel like this is something you should necessarily hard focus on. I think you have enough on your plate focusing on World 1, World 2 specifically and sailing um, that I don't want to focus too much on this, but what I do want to focus on, what I've been hinting at kind of for the rest, uh, for like the entire time we've been speaking is your Bubo. So alchemy is kind of the end game for everyone in Eidolon. Um, your Bubo is very underleveled and underappreciated. I think you could stand a, uh, you can get a lot out of your Bubo by focusing on him and trying to get Cranium Cooking up and running. So the big breakpoint for Bubo to where he becomes effective is going to be Tentacle. You have level, I believe, 191 max talents, so you're almost there. If not, I mean, I believe you're actually there where you're able to start cranium cooking like every 30, 40 minutes. This will massively reduce the amount of time you're waiting on Alchemy to progress. Bubo, when he's properly booked at level 200 for Tentacle, will save you months, years to decades of time in Alchemy, and I'm not, I'm not joking. The amount of time that cooking roadkill in combination with cranium cooking provides for pushing alchemy is massive. So I'd highly recommend trying to get this unlocked. Try to get um, try to get this to 200. I don't know what your max talent is right now, uh, but you have uh, level one of Fury Relic. You don't have checkout takeout. That's kind of sucks. <laughs> But you're also almost there for unlocking Oxygen, which gives you 10 max talent levels. Uh, the fact that your Cranium Cooking is level 191 gives me kind of hope that you're close to Tentacle level 200. Getting that to 200 will uh, make it so whenever you kill an enemy, you have a chance to reduce their attack cooldowns by 3 seconds, which impacts uh, Cranium Cooking. Getting that up to 200, uh, Tentacle up to 200 is the most important thing. It'll help you save so much time that we're able to reliably cranium cook every single day. Uh, it'll allow you to uh, get more uh, liquid in your like color cauldrons, your power cauldron, whatever, so you can push unlocking those bubbles. Um, right now, your hard focus should be either um, be kind of swapping between DK and statue farming and trying to push alchemy once your tentacles level 200. Trying to do that off cooldown every single day, um, like even like two, three, four times a day actively on your bubo is going to help you push alchemy, unlock the rest of your bubbles through world six, help you push liquid generation through Equinox. I also haven't talked about your Equinox, but I mean, it's a topic for another time. Um, but it helps you a lot with alchemy and trying to push the bubbles that you're trying to do. So that's, I recommend trying to get your talents up to 200 if it's not already. And Tentacle level 200 is going to be a really massive breakpoint for you. And I think you 
are almost there. If not, you are there. You're able to do that. So yeah, I try to focus on pushing up your talent level through Atom Collider, finishing the achievement in World 3, and also trying to unlock um, Oxygen in Atom Collider to try to get more max talent level if you aren't there already. But yeah, Bubo is going to help you a ton in pushing Alchemy, and that's going to be probably the best thing for you to focus on right now. Overall, it'll help your account, it'll help you with damage, it'll help you with your stats, it'll help you with your efficiency. And your efficiency is going to help you with Atom Collider. Atom Collider is going to help you with your Bubo. It's going to help you with your Alchemy, your stamps. Yeah, it all comes back to skilling is my my big takeaway for you right now is what you should be focusing on. So a lot to focus on. Um, a lot of things you could be focusing on. My best advice is going to be skilling for you right now. You're going to help juice out your Atom Collider. So hopefully that kind of helps give you some perspective. Um, Again, it's kind of scatterbrained, so I apologize. I wonder if anyone's confused in chat. But yeah, scaling, scaling, scaling. That's my big takeaway for you. Use your books on scaling specific talents. Upgrade um, like the mage bubbles if you can for scaling specifically. That'll help you a ton with your characters and ho hopefully help you progress much more smoothly in the next coming weeks. Um, as always, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out in the Discord. We're always available. Uh, pretty much anyone's available to help. I'll be also there kind of answering questions here and there. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Appreciate it so much. Again, if you guys do want to join the Discord and the Twitch live, uh, Twitch stream whenever I go live, uh, link is in the description. Uh, and as always, thanks for watching. Have a great one.